Street friends and welcome back to the channel or if it is your first time here, welcome especially. I'm Sally and I'm so excited that you've stopped by. Before we jump into today's topic, I want to give you just a few announcements. The first one being that I am actually going back to, re to releasing two videos per week um, and to kind of kick that off over the next several weeks, I'm going to be doing a deep dive series where we are going to just be jumping in and chatting about a topic that has to do with pro-metabolic nutrition and lifestyle or lifestyle. Um, so today is officially the first one of those, but I'm going to kind of count last week's video on blood sugar regulation as a part of that. And I'm actually going to put all of these videos in my just listen playlist, which is set up as a podcast on YouTube. Um, there's, it's not like an official podcast, but my hope with that playlist is that it's something you can put on in the car if you want to like brush up on topics where you don't necessarily need the video, the visual aspect of it, but just the audio is going to really get the point across. So definitely go check that out. And then if you have a topic that you would like me to jump into, please leave it in the comment section. Um, and assuming I am knowledgeable on the topic, I will do my best to dive into it. But today's topic is on how we are essentially destroying our skin from the inside out, how we are um, wreaking havoc on our systems through inflammation and how we are causing a massive amount of oxidative stress uh, because of, and I'm gonna make this caveat, caveat here and say processed, processed and excessive polyunsaturated fats or PUFAs in our diets. And where I want to start is with our skin and with sun exposure. So I was told from a very young age that to see any degree of color change on my skin was a sign of skin damage, of sun damage happening. And that I wanted to wear so much sunscreen anytime I went outside. Heck, if I was sitting by the window, which I'm like, this is ridiculous. Now in retrospect, I'm like, this is freaking ridiculous. Um, that I never saw, you know, any degree of coloration shift in my skin. And I, for a little bit, I like, I heated this because I have always been one to burn really, really easily. Um, it kind of seemed like no matter how much sunscreen I would wear the first like big pool day of the summer or beach day of the summer, I would always burn to a crisp. And so I was also really just worried about it because I'd seen this in myself and there's plenty of skin cancer in my family. And so it's something that I was really worried about. But at the same time, I, I felt weird about this idea that we shouldn't see any degree of color change because tanning is just such a natural process. So incredibly natural. Um, and we also just look healthier when we have a little bit of color on our skin. And I know some people would say that's just because it's a cultural norm, but I, I disagree. I just think if we are like a little bit colored because of the sun, whatever your skin tone may naturally be, we tend to look like we have a little bit more life in us. And we tend to feel that way when we're out in the sun more. And now I know um, that this is this is legitimately true. We need to be in the sun, um, ideally exposed, exposing our pores, um, you can count the back of you too, and our eyelids to the sun without sunscreen, without sunglasses, without clothing, in order to be able to properly synthesize vitamin D. And vitamin D that you're gonna synthesize in your own body is a lot more powerful and uh, I'm gonna even dare say like safer than vitamin D that we could supplement externally. Vitamin D hasn't really been shown to have any direct side effects to supplement externally. And it's very important that we have enough. And most people don't have enough. Most people wear a bunch of sunscreen and don't go outside enough. Um, but when we supplement externally with vitamin D, we can really throw up our throw off our calcium and our magnesium ratios. Um, calcium can go up, that can drive magnesium down. And if our magnesium levels are too low, our own ability to actually synthesize vitamin D is impaired. So it can create this kind of crazy cycle um, where our bodies just become less self-sufficient. Whereas if we are able to get vitamin D um, or synthesize vitamin D with sunlight, um, our bodies just do much better with it. It's it's like similar reasoning to why I'm a big fan of supplementing with like beef liver as opposed to taking an iron supplement um, or taking a copper supplement or something in isolation. So that's one benefit of being in the sun. And also it is really, really crucial to our circadian rhythm to get sunlight on our eyes, on our eyelids, especially. Um, it's just, 
I don't know. I just, I just don't think you can deny that the sun is an incredibly healing force. So when I first started diving into the pro metabolic world, I was hearing about PUFAs and I was like, what the heck is a PUFA? Who are these crazy people who are like so extreme that they're not eating anything with PUFAs in them? And I was a little bit apprehensive about the whole topic at first. I'm not going to lie. Um, but as I've done more and more research, as I've been going through my nutritional therapy program, I have come to learn just how destructive these are to our bodies. Um, and I have experienced it firsthand after coming off the cut that Samuel and I did um, this spring. So when we were on the cut, we were just eating extremely clean, um, really, really whole foods, which we try to do anyway, but it just kind of showed us areas in our diet where we could do a better job um, and and just source better, more nourishing foods than what we might tend to do in things. Okay, so we were eating like a super duper low processed PUFA diet. Um, and then afterwards, we went out with a friend and we got hibachi. And we didn't even eat that much, so that wasn't the issue. It wasn't like we overate. Um, but they were cooking the hibachi on the flat top with vegetable oil. And there was like a ton of it in there. And I swear to you, I ate the teeniest little bit of that hibachi and my stomach lost its mind. It was like insane bloating. I felt so nauseous. Everything just felt ugh, like it was puffy and bloated, but not just kept to my belly um, and like achy at the same time. And I'm like, I must be losing my mind. What's going on? Is it just because I saw him cooking with the vegetable oil that it's freaking me out, that it's affecting me like this? But then I look over at Samuel and he is having the exact same reaction. And he doesn't even like know about the poof of peace in the same sense as I do at this time. We felt sick for, I mean, 24 hours. It took about, I would say, 15 hours before we were feeling somewhat better and then it really was like through the end of that day before we were kind of feeling back to normal but it was just insane to see what was happening to our bodies because of those polyunsaturated fats now i promise this is going to come together with the skin piece of it in a little bit um and actually in next week's video we're going to kind of talk specifically about internal sunscreen so make sure you're here for that uh but when we eat processed PUFAs, namely vegetable oils or seed oils, think sunflower, think canola, think safflower oil, we are consuming oils that are rancid. Um, so naturally, these oils cannot handle heat because can't handle, well, words, cannot handle heat um, because polyunsaturated fats um, consist of, they have two double bonds, which are very unstable. And this makes them very reactive to heat, to light, and to oxygen. However, it's cheap to produce these oils and there are now processes that allow um, the oils to essentially be broken and then they add, it's like either a substance of some sort or it's some like heat processing that covers up the taste of rancidity and changes changes the smoke point um, such that you can cook at really high temperatures with them without them breaking down in their new form, but where that breakdown has actually actually already occurred. So we are when we are eating these seed oils, we're eating oils that are already rancid. Now I need to make a disclaimer here. It's not across the board awful to eat PUFAs. We should be getting about 10% of our fat from polyunsaturated sources. And it's actually crucial that we get some polyunsaturated fats in our diet because this is where our omega-3s um, and our omega-6 fatty acids come from. Now, most of us are getting plenty of omega-6 fatty acids because unfortunately ratios are thrown off. And especially if you're eating like conventionally raised meat, you're going to see that it has way more omega-6 than omega-3 fatty acids in it. Um, but these correlate to prostaglandins, which regulate our inflammatory response. Um, you need to have both pro-inflammatory and anti-inflammatory prostaglandins to have a proper inflammatory response. Um, and we need to have those, you know, in the correct ratio in order to do this. So if you're interested in learning more about that, I can do a different deep, deep dive on that topic, but all of it goes to say we should be consuming some polyunsaturated fats 
so that we can especially get those omega-3s and yes, the omega-6s, but omega-3 should probably be our priority. Uh, however, this should be coming from whole food sources, um, things such as salmon, things such as maybe some nuts, if your body can handle nuts that have not been broken down by heat and which still contain vitamin E naturally because when we're eating these sources of polyunsaturated fats in their natural non-broken down forms, there is vitamin E in them which is helping to balance out um, the release of free radicals and the potential inflammatory response. But seed oils, it's a completely different story. Um, and even if, I'm gonna mix up my oils here, but I wanna see even if it's like you're cooking with hemp oil or something like that, you shouldn't be cooking with it. It should be kept in the fridge, kept in the dark, um, and just used as a finishing oil. But when we are eating them on a regular basis, like we do now, we are dumping free radicals into our bodies and causing a tremendous amount of oxidative stress. And so here's how this ties back to our skin. And I'm going to open up my notes here um, because I jotted something down from the National Institute of Health. This is like mainstream medicine, National Institute of Health. Um, in short, what happens is that ultraviolet induced hydrolysis of membrane phospholipids, so the fats, in your cell membrane, in your skin, uh, releases polyunsaturated fats and their subsequent metabolism results in the inflammatory response, which results in oxidative stress. So sunburn is an inflammatory response to the reaction between UV rays and polyunsaturated fats in our skin. Um, the think about it just as when we're taking the seed oil and exposing it to heat and corrupting it in that sense even if the polyunsaturated fat has not yet already been broken and it's in our skin hanging out this is an active metabolism site for those PUFAs um, and so when it reacts with the sunlight you're going to see that breakdown you're going to see that inflammation you're going to see that oxidative oxidative stress which um, our bodies just cannot keep up with. Um, but again, when you're eating whole food sources and you have the vitamin E and with it and you're not overdoing it, uh, you are able to prevent that level of destruction and get kind of what you need from those foods. Again, let me know if you want me to get into that specifically, but in short, kind of wrapping that all up, when we are in the sun and we have been eating a diet high in processed polyunsaturated fats, those fats are reacting with the sun. The metabolism of those fats is releasing free radicals, is causing ox oxidative stress, is causing this inflammatory response, which is sunburn, um, and which results in all of the skin damage that we see down the road from sunburn. Now, obviously, we still need to be intentional about our sun exposure. Going out earlier in the morning or later in the evening, later in the afternoon is going to be much gentler than if we're out in midday. And I'm not saying you're never gonna get sunburn, like your skin is eventually gonna react if you're just like under this harsh UV light source, even if you're eating super clean um, all the time. But sometimes even when we're putting sunscreen on, our sunscreen is full of potentially things like sunflower oil and we are putting these things on our skin we are literally inviting this reaction to take place. That's one of the massive reasons that I've switched to using tallow balm on my skin um, is because it's completely saturated fat, completely saturated fat, it is completely stable, and it is not reactive. Now you do have monounsaturated fats. Um, olive oil is like the kind of key source of monounsaturated fats, um, and most of our fat intake proportionally actually should kind of be from monounsaturated fats. It's not something we really need to think of as much. Um, those are gonna be much more stable than polyunsaturated fats, but not as stable as a saturated fat. So for instance, I personally am okay like pan frying in olive oil or roasting in olive oil. Some people are not. That's kind of a, a personal thing that you have to be mindful of as long as I'm as long as I'm keeping it like decently below the smoke point, I'm okay with it. But um, you would always want to fry, for instance, in something like tallow or lard. Um, I want to say avocado oil. I think avocado oil is a saturated fat, but don't quote me on that one because again, I need to have my sheet in front of me. Uh, okay, so we've been a little bit all over the place, but we've talked about how sunburn is the reaction between polyunsaturated fats and our skin and sunlight. We've talked about how 
it really is more complicated than just all PUFAs are evil. We actually need some of them in order to get our essential fatty acids, our omega-3s and our omega-6s, which are going to regulate our inflammatory response. And if we don't have enough of one of these, or if we don't have enough saturated fats in our diet, which are also responsible um, for one of those really important prostaglandins, we are going to experience more inflammation, whether it is through a skin reaction, through a gut reaction, any sort of disease in the body, a fatty acid imbalance uh, is going to perpetuate this. It may even be presenting as a histamine issue or as allergies, um, which is another topic as well that I would have to be, be happy to get into if you are interested. So all of that goes to say it is the polyunsaturated fats in your diet. It is not the sun. We need to be intentional about our sun exposure, but we really need to be intentional about the fats that we are sourcing in our diet. I never wanna take an extremist position, but this is one area where I really have noticed how it wreaks havoc on my own body. So just food for thought, let me know down below what you wanna hear about in the weeks to come. Thank you so much for watching and until next time, bye y'all.